never want a serious crisis to go to waste. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, M Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. I have two words for you. Predators Romans. You will never see it coming. It's time for On Target Radio. Chicagoland's only radio show dedicated to the red meat issues that affect your life. From gun control to freedom of speech. Now, debating, debunking, and discussing today's hot issues. Here are your hosts, David Lombardo and Gretchen Fritz. Welcome to On Target Radio. Tonight, David and Gretchen will be talking about the ineffectiveness of congressional Republicans. Ineligible individuals being made U.S. citizens. Mexico's President Trump contingency plan, and the, and the Democrats are panicking, so Obama says the nation is on its own. So be sure to give us a call at 312-642-5600, or go to Facebook and like our page on Target Radio, and ask a question there. And now, from the seething cauldron of personal opinion, it's time for David's Rant of the Week. On uh, November 6, 2014, Republicans, already fed up with the rapidly increasing infusion of socialism by President Obama, went to the polls to voice their opinion. Elections were held for all 435 seats of the House of Representatives, with Republicans winning 16 seats from Democrats, while three Republican-held seats turned Democratic. The Republicans achieved their largest majority in the House since 1928. Combined with Republican gains in 2010, the total number of Democratic-held House seats lost under Barack Obama's presidency in midterm elections rose to 77. This marked the highest number of House seats lost under a two-term president of the same party since Harry Truman, and was accomplished with only 36.4% of eligible voters voting, the lowest turnout since 1942. And what did we get for the 367 billion dollars we spent on the midterm election. Well, yesterday's headline was 37 Republican congressmen backed a plan to defund Muslim refugees. Now, let, let me put that in perspective for those of you that live in the real world and largely ignore Congress. 37 of 247 Republican congressmen are concerned enough about the ever-increasing slaughter of their constituents to try to do something about curbing the tide of Muslim refugees into the U.S. A demographic that we know includes refugees from such terrorist hotbeds as Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq, and Somalia, people bent on entirely destroying our way of life. To make matters worse, which is difficult to imagine, Obama says, we're still not taking in our fair share of refugees. And the Hildebeest vows to step up refugee resettlement if elected and bring in 65,000 more Syrian refugees. And what are Republican voters planning on doing about it? Nothing. They're a house divided because they'd rather stand on principle and vote for some idealistic candidate that has as much chance of winning the election as Trey Gowdy has of getting the Hildebeest to speak the truth at the next congressional subcommittee meeting. This administration can't even use the words Islamic terrorist, let alone do anything about it. They're killing us in increasing numbers, hiding behind political correctness and unconstitutional gun control laws that prevent John Q from being able to defend himself in the most likely places for a terrorist attack to occur in the country. Hey, newsflash for all you flyover country people clutching guns and Bibles. Put them down long enough to pick up a newspaper and see how well that's working out in Europe. And amid all the claims of taking back the government and doing away with socialist crap implemented by the worst president in U.S. history, what exactly have those young Turks we elected in the midterms done for John Q? Well, for the first 18 days in Congress, absolutely nothing. Not one single jobs-related bill passed, but they did manage to raise the deficit by $610.7 billion dollars. They also passed more permanent tax cuts for the rich and corporations while voting to raise taxes on middle-class families with children. 241 Republicans voted against bringing the Help Hire Our Heroes Act on the floor for a vote. It would have provided training resources for veterans seeking good-paying jobs. 99% of House Republicans voted to allow predatory lenders on military bases. 
That's what you got for $3.67 billion midterm elections. So naturally, now you want to be sure to vote for anyone but Donald Trump because he wasn't your choice. Great. <laughs> Look how well we've succeeded with the Republicans in control. I can't wait to see how well it goes when the Hilda Beast is in control. This election is going to get ugly, and you'll have no one to blame but yourselves. And that, Gretchen, is my rant for the week. You're scaring me. Stop it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is scary. Well, you know, we talked about this. For the first year, Harry Reid could have still been in charge. You wouldn't know the difference. Right, yeah. The the Senate especially was very frustrating. We worked very hard. We spent a lot of money to finally get the majority in the Senate, which we haven't had for many years. And And for what? Yeah. They you know, they could pass bills that the House has passed and send them to the president, but they're like, Oh, we don't have a veto proof majority. I'm like, quit your whining. Pass the bill. And we've talked about this because and, and your point's valid. I don't care if you don't have veto proof. Make him put his name on the dotted line every exactly. day. Exactly. Make them own it. I, 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 you know, it dumbfounds me. And if that's not bad enough, now we have this House divided thing. So oh, I'm just not going to vote for him. So great. You don't vote for Trump. Clearly, the Hilda Beast will get elected. That's going to be better. Somehow that's better. <laughs> well, you know what else happened a couple of days ago is that uh, Ted Cruz finally endorsed Trump. Yeah. And if you if you think that's not strategic, come on. Yeah, uh, I bet he swallowed hard though. Well, maybe, but yeah. I I think that he had planned to do it all along. He just wanted to do it at a more strategic time, which is late September. Well, that's that's a good point. Cruz, uh, Ted Cruz is not. Yeah, I was just going to say this that. is not his first rodeo. <laughs> yeah, he's not. He's he, yes, exactly. I was just going to say that he's he's no dummy. He's no babe in the woods. Yeah, you know. I don't know. This is on Target Radio. It's AM 560, The Answer. Give us a call, 312-642-5600. Are you happy with what Republicans are doing? Um, I'm not. I'm not at all happy. But I do know this. Hillary Clinton has been very clear about what she will do, and that would make me less happy. So, you know, it is what it is. The interesting thing is people in other countries are beginning to go, uh, the immigration thing. Maybe this wasn't the best choice. Right. You know, uh, after widespread rapes, murders, whatever, this um, the prime minister of Hungary, Vic, uh, Victor Orban, literally has said, what we need to do, here's the plan. Guys, we need to go and get all of them and put them in what is essentially a concentration camp. Essentially, you're concentrating them, right? Out of the EU. Yeah. Take them out of the EU to some Stick them on an island country. somewhere. Yeah, that's where they go. Either that's on an island said. or in northern Africa somewhere. And then uh, if they want to apply to come to the EU, we'll process them. <laughs> I don't think I'd be holding my breath. Right. And that's getting a lot of uh, a lot of attention. A lot of the Europeans are really ticked off that he's saying that. It's but he's he uh, hungry and him in particular uh has been kind of saying this the whole time. I mean, Hungary They've has never been behind this. No, they've pretty much, you know, they've only let a few in, and I think a lot of them have kind of snuck in, and, uh, and yeah, they've, they've been against it the whole time. At one point, they're up to 9,000 refugees a day coming into the EU. Yeah. Um, that's outrageous. Well, actually, this says 9,000 migrants a day cross the border from Serbia to Hungary. Hungary. Yeah. So that's just Hungary. Well, that's problem. EU. Yeah, but that's you're right. That's the Hungary. I mean, problem. but what? How many multiply that by however other many borders they were crossing over? Apparently, uh, Orban has never been schooled on political correctness. No, <laughs> he calls these people poison uh, and a threat to Europe's uh, Christian identity, which of course, obviously, they are. Yeah. Um, Merkel is uh, is like still totally oblivious to this. No, no, we have to bring them in. You have to take your fair share. People in her country are being raped and killed. Right. By scores. Yeah. And and she's still doing it, which makes you, it, it, it literally makes you wonder why does she have that attitude mm -hmm. when her own people are suffering from it. Right. Like minor, minor girls are right. being, are being raped and, and molested and things like that. I honestly don't know. Um, 
I don't know why the Europeans put up with it at all. Look what's happening in France, happening in Germany. All you got to do is watch these people and look what happens. You let them in, chaos breaks out. Yeah. And they don't get it. Well, and lately, I mean, this past week, we've had a couple of things happen here. I mean, there's just, you know, the other, this morning I was watching the news and I was thinking, they're here. (laughs) The Gene Asselborn. Luxembourg's foreign minister said Hungary should be suspended from the EU for violating democratic core values and treating refugees like animals. They act like animals. We're going to be back with more on Target Radio. We're going to talk about acting like animals when we return. And you're listening to AM 560, The The Answer. Answer. in traffic we've got the answer from the am 560 traffic center taking a look at traffic adam street closed over the chicago river until tomorrow morning they're doing weekend long bridge work you also have cta red line work on the north side closing broadway between wilson and leland should also be reopened tomorrow morning northbound red line trains not stopping between wilson and argyle in the meantime Elsewhere, delay free both sides of the Edens. The Kennedy Inn just slow around Canfield. Give yourself 21 from O'Hare, 10 from the junction. Delay free outbound at 20 minutes. Looking good on the Eisenhower. It's a George might have been working. He's on hold from Friday morning. Yeah, right. That could be it. Talking to another person. Maybe number two will do that. Number two is going to explain what the fuck that means. Larry says, another great rant, Scary Ventura. Who said that? Larry. Larry. He watches, doesn't he? He's right Yo, here. Larry. Dude, thank you. Yes, Larry is one of our voyeurs. Yes. <laughs> one of the regulars. That's not what I said. <laughs> yeah, that's not what you said. <laughs> Don't forget, you're doing... Yeah, I am indeed. Larry likes to Oh, watch. my God. <laughs> Javier Garcia likes Safer USA. <laughs> I wonder how that happened. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. <laughs> is he? I know, right? Oh, he is really. Oh, so much the better. Yeah, so much. Better. That'll exactly. teach him. That'll teach him to leave Facebook on. Oh well. Okay. Got a Lucy on the line too. We have what? Lucy. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 There's no difference between congressional Republicans least, and Democrats. At least she's on topic. Yeah, because I have no idea what Roskam and Rahm Emanuel have to do with Should it. Should George maybe cut him loose? Or? Well, I, I mean, I don't understand. I don't oh, know. because you're saying that there's no difference. That Harry Reid could have been in control. Another line load up. You touched a nerve. Mm-hmm. I did. Said something. <laughs> Lombardo is an ass hat. What? <laughs> <laughs> Which is one of my favorite words. <laughs> you know, I've never, uh, I've never, I never actually. Say it, but I love it. <laughs> I've never figured out what an ass hat is. Okay. It's completely useless, obviously. Yes. Well, and that's, I mean, that's true. It's a useless that's, widget, but that's the point. Yeah. Is but, that uh, it's completely. But useless. who woke up one morning and goes, "New word." Ass hat. <laughs> I mean, wh- where does that come from? Does anybody know where ass hat comes from? If Callus is what on, is, he'd know. What is the etymology of the word? Of ass hat, yes. Oh, that's so, funny. <laughs> so Lewis says media not reporting refugees' issues effectively. Well, you're right. That's a fact. Well, I got I touched a nerve. Oh, I forgot water. Vodka. You can use vodka. Uh, I got I hand that. lotion. You oh, can. God. Oh, 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 oh. Well, the next, next to the next person. Louise? Louis. 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 I think you always say Louise, but anyway, yes. All right, you're reading. <clears throat> you're listening to On Target Radio on AM560, The Answer, with David Lombardo and Gretchen Fritz. Here's David and Gretchen with more interesting conversation on gun control, concealed carry, 
freedom of speech, and other red meat issues that affect your life. This segment is brought to you by the Will County Grassroots Division of the Illinois State Rifle Association. Join like-minded friends supporting the right to keep and bear arms in Illinois at 7 p.m. on the third Wednesday of the month at the Silver Dollar Restaurant in Elwood, Illinois. Did I ask you? Yeah, I think I did. Cliff asked me what couple you brought to the thing. I was at Aurora doing a meeting. Well, who... Oh, you oh you brought your mom and Randy right? That's yeah, <laughs> my mom and her husband. Yeah. <laughs> Cliff said, "Who, who was the couple? I don't know. It's I don't know what it was. It was just some people. They were sent on the side of I fifty five, so I picked them up. Oh yeah, right, great. <laughs> just kidding, country. mom. Just kidding. Qu- the question is, do they listen to the show? That's all I care about. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Phil from Carol Stream um, got laughed at by uh, the more I don't know which morning host. Phil, what morning host laughed at you? Uh, Dan and Amy. Oh, really? Well, that's, uh, excuse oh, me. How dare they? Yeah, well, there's harps playing in the background. Oh, look, I, they laugh because I said there's not a difference between Rob Emanuel and Peter Rosco. And, they're, they're, guys, there's, there's not a difference. There's not a difference between Barbara Boxer and Ted Cruz. Both of them have spouses who made millions because of their political connections. In big financial institutions. Well, you know what, so, Phil? That, I mean, you're right. That it, the problem, and we were talking about this at dinner. Uh, you know, when when do you become a career politician? At what point are you a career politician? And that point is when you're making way more money than than you're you're getting paid. And it, it, that's a good observation, Phil. It it, it really is. The people get uh, ensconced in the, in this job, and and it is to their benefit for it to continue. And on that line, there are no party divisions. We save our jobs. We may argue about other stuff, but the the number one priority is we save our jobs. And I think that's what you're seeing a lot of. Um, we know people, I won't say his name, but a young, I think an Air Force, been a young Air Force officer who was going to go for one term, make a difference, and never go back. And what? He's, you know, he's there. Fourth term. Yeah, fourth term. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And doesn't do anything that he said he was going to do. Um Here's another interesting one. Lucy's got a, a an interesting comment from Indiana uh, about uh, Republicans and Democrats in Congress, right? Yes, I do. Um, I agree with the gentleman before me in saying that there's no difference between the Republicans and the Democrats anymore. The executive orders that have been put through have um, they could have been, you know, uh, voted out by the Republicans, but they did absolutely nothing to any of those. And speaking of executive orders, there's another one that's coming up with the CDC. I don't know if you heard about that, but um, it's up for public comment right now. It's called the con- the docket name is Control of Communicable Diseases. And what they want to be able to do is they want to be able to force you to be vaccinated, and they also want to be able to detain you for 72 hours up to 72 hours without being able to contact a lawyer or even any family member or friend to let them know that you are being detained by the CDC. And they're putting this underneath a um, saying that uh, they're trying to protect us from communicable diseases, but they're including all kinds of things in there um, that... I mean, it's just, it's really, really scary. You, you know, you're right. And and that's the kind of little news tidbit that people are going, oh, you're conspiracy theorists. But that is true. That that bill does exist. And, and that is what they're talking about. And it's like gun control and all this other stuff. It isn't about the control of guns. It isn't about inoculating against diseases. It's about controlling you. It's about control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's about knowing where you are, what you're doing all the time, 24 hours a day. Yeah, they really, really don't like the the homeschoolers and the other people who refuse to vaccinate their children. And um, they're they're even, in many cases, cramming Gardasil down down our throats, figuratively. And, uh, you know, these things are, they're not proven, they're not tested, they're not safe. You know, it's, it's really bad. It it is, um, you know, we've had presidents in the past who, you know, they were pretty strong-willed guys, and uh, some some of them done things that people didn't particularly care about. This is 
so far over the top. Yeah. Look, here, here's this thing about 800 ineligible, ineligible people were granted U.S. citizenship because they couldn't get the digital fingerprints done in time. So instead of saying, you know what, I'm sorry, we don't have the stuff ready yet, you can't come in yet, no, they default. Oh, well, we can't do a background check on you, so just come on in. And well, I don't think it was like that. I think they were already here, and they came up for naturalization, and until after it was already done, they didn't even know they made a mistake. Well, but, until after it was done. But the point is, they didn't. They, there's no real check on them. They just gave it to them. Mm-hmm. They just said, "Okay, fine." Well, and worry. also, it also says that um, these people that they flagged, these 858 people that they flagged, are flagged because they they came in under different names or they used different names before, and under those names they were ordered deported or removed. And so that's why and when, they didn't. when they came up on the naturalization list, it didn't set off any red flags because they were using a different name before, conveniently. Exactly. You know, uh, Lewis has a thing. It, he's he calling from Chicago, and, it, and it's, we're going to talk to him here in a second, but it's a point well taken. Vladimir Putin said in an open letter to the American people, your press is covering up stories, mm-hmm. and they are lying to you. The the leader of the largest communist, well, second largest communist country on earth, is warning Americans, saying, we really don't want to be having a war with you guys. But you're not being told the whole story. You have to get a a, a leader of a country like that to warn us about our own administration. Right. Isn't that right, Lewis? They're not about the press? I agree with you 100%. Uh, the, the people don't realize how much the media is trying to cover up this Muslim problem. Uh, they hate Trump so much they don't want to do anything to help them. But they were even accusing that uh, that, that guy in, in Washington of being Hispanic. He turns out to be Turkish, the guy who shot those five people. He was a Turkish immigrant. So, I mean, you know, it's amazing. They're not covering half the story because they just don't want to help Trump because this helps Trump if people know about this. Yeah, well, God forbid. Well, and I think, and I, and, and that's, I expect that's probably true. But it, I think it goes beyond that. They have this agenda, and the agenda is to destabilize this country as much as, as, much as possible. And just yesterday, it hit the papers, <laughs> God love them, some hackers broke into George Soros's email, and they got a bunch of his email. And in his email, he says he's funded those people who are going down and rioting and causing, causing trouble. Um, he's paying for it out of his pocket. I, we were saying this at dinner. It, is that not sedition? Yeah, I agree with you, hundred percent. We got a comment on Facebook from Matt, and he said, "I love that someone is mentioning the media's compliance with lefty issues. What can we do about that? Any ideas?" Well, <laughs> I was a journalist, and I lost my contract, so I don't. Know. <laughs> I could have saved the world, but I, I'm That's not. That's right. Not, yeah, I won't be writing about maintenance and airplanes anymore. But. Um, <laughs> It, it, it is, it's a problem. The, the press has typically been, for the most part, liberal. Always mm-hmm. has been. The, the concept set up in this society was they were what they called the fourth estate. And they were the ones that were checks and balances on the other three estates, being the president, the legislature, the and the judiciary. The three branches, yeah. right. And the problem is they're now in the bag. Mm-hmm. And you look, and you know what? Even Fox is a little weird. They tend to be, take the other side, they tend to be more conservative, but somebody challenged them, said, oh, you're just conservative drivel, like a liberal has the right to say that when every other one is liberal drivel. But when they actually sat down, somebody in the independent party sat down and and looked at every single person that's a commentator on Fox, there was actually, I think, one more conservative than liberal. (laughs) It was almost (laughs) identically 50-50, almost 50-50. but well, I, I, I have some suggestions. I think writing letters to the editor is a, a more traditional way of getting out if you can get another opinion, yes, if you can get them past um, the editors. But a lot of papers are desperate for things like that, and so they, they will print them. And the other thing, I mean, I think there's there's a lot of great bloggers that are really making a dent, and they're really um, getting a share of the news market. I mean, Clash Daily and... Uh, Freedom Outpost, and there's a lot of really good bloggers out there, and I think I think that's part of the solution. And do you think that then that it's coincidental that they want to turn the the internet over to the UN? No, not at all. Of course, they <laughs> want they want to silence they those want to people. Stop us, yeah. 
Uh, we're going to be back with more hate, vile, pithy stuff to say uh, with more on Target where you when we return. Meanwhile, you're listening to AM560, The Answer. Yeah, I would take some if you can make it. Yeah, I am going to do shrinks from that mic in there because this mic is uh, dying. Dying? Yeah, it's been slowly dying. How long is it dying? Uh, can oh, you, you tell? You mean it? Audio-wise. Oh, nice. Can, can you tell when I when I when I use a different mic how better it sounds? No, I have no idea. What's going on. <laughs> no idea. You didn't notice when I did the reading here? No. No, I don't. I get he, so. You can't uh, hear anything, Jim. I, 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 no, I just get so. I get so you're invested in, in what yeah, I'm talking zone, about. I don't. Yeah. You could drop a bomb out here. I Did wouldn't you know it. The only thing I'm aware of when I'm on the air is Larry Andel's watching me. That's the only yeah. thing I'm really aware of. He, he goes. He goes. I was bored this week, so I made this sticky cake guy some free candy. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? Did you see the picture that uh, Larry made for us? Is it on? Um, Go on the private messages. He photoshopped our photo. I'm trying to look and see. Something coming up here. <coughs> wow, you can really tell. I'm on, there we go. On target. Go into private messages. Mm-hmm. And then click on the. Oh, on the top it says messages. On the on the top left it says page, oh. and next to it is messages. Yeah. And you click on Larry's tab. Um, there it is. Larry. <laughs> Getting real time comments now. Yeah. Uh, Larry, Larry made. The fun thing about screen. Larry Photoshop us. <laughs> Little hats. It's nice. <laughs> You know, I've got a couple of pictures that wouldn't need Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like uh, I like Gretchen's. It's that sort of. Next time I want a cowboy hat, Larry. <laughs> cowboy hat for Gretchen. Or a top hat. A top hat would be jaunty for a woman, I think. <laughs> That's funny. Should we, sh- David? Should we repost that on the on the main thing sure, so everybody not? can see it? Yeah, why not? <clears throat> why not? I've always said we take our subject seriously, but not ourselves. That's right. We have fun. We do indeed. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, you know what the stop is? The stop's over by me. I think I had it in my hand when we were running because we had 30 seconds. What the hell's wrong with you, what boy? What happened? No, the, make sure that's on target. No, this stop. I had it in my hand when I ran to tell you guys that like, oh. the show was starting. <laughs> Which is upside down. There you go. We've never done that. Yeah. All of a sudden, I look up and I'm like... <coughs> we well, and the funny thing was, we were in there reading. He kept checking his watch, so I didn't even bother to look I at my watch. Thinking, I figured I he knew what was going on. I, I thought you guys were right here in the hallway yeah, talking. Yeah, the deaf reading the blind, yeah. <laughs> and then I turned and there was nobody. I said, I'm going to go get my watch. <laughs> Because I, it's, it must be something with the doorway they put there or something with the acoustics. It sounded like you guys were standing yeah, right we were, here. Yeah, we were. Uh, we literally sounded like you were standing right there. You guys were not. Uh, we were not. Okay, Jim so so once a year, we almost blow the opening. It's, it's about once a year. Yeah. 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 Um, I would agree with that. Jim what? is doing his thing in there. Yes, he's going there. Um, I'm going to leave your mics cold until he's done. I'm so used to people no, shutting me out. No panickings. The only reason I didn't turn your mics on at the beginning is because I had that thing cranked all the way up. Oh, okay. And I didn't want to get. Crapping out. I didn't want to get that, that echo coming back in there. No problem. And actually, problem. I think they changed it because Jim sounded better today than last night down at the mic. Oh, yeah. So I think they swapped that mic out. We won't get into it. I fuck with him. I fuck with him. Yeah, I fuck with him. Um, <laughs> did you really fuck with him? <laughs> It was a rhetorical question, you're not, okay? You're not fucking around. What else is there to do? <laughs> Hear nothing. I just, <laughs> nothing. I just, I just read what Larry Handel wrote about the club. He said, "Does that mean Aurora Club will, will build safe spaces for people who don't like bump guns?" Funny, yeah, I funny. <laughs> I just got it. I never read this stuff. <laughs> I take care of that part. 
I also Fred, never read Fred the copy read either. I, yeah. I really don't read anything. I just no, you do you read it out loud. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. so yesterday, this is priceless. On, yesterday Brian. at Safer USA, oh, yeah. uh, he gives me a letter from Utah, a photocopy of a letter he got from Utah. I also got the is letter. Is nothing sacred? No, nothing is sacred. Okay, well, we have that established. So, <clears> yes. And then he didn't give me new applications. That's what the letter said, is you're supposed to start using the, the updated one. application because yeah. it's always the case. Oh, and yeah, and I go, well, clearly you, oh, you did, oh, okay. clearly you did not actually read this letter that you gave to me. He just passed it on. <laughs> right. I saw it was a reduction in money. I just passed it on. <laughs> what am I going to say? 2135. Hi. Right. Right. <laughs> Shooters, October 4th from 530 to 730 p.m. You're listening to On Target Radio on AM560, The Answer, with David Lombardo and Gretchen Fritz. Here's David and Gretchen with more interesting conversation on gun control, concealed carry, freedom of speech, and other red meat issues that affect your life. Think Springfield in September. No, not our state capital. Shrank Smoking Gun is offering 10% off all store-owned Springfield firearms through September. From concealed carry to 1911s. With the largest selection of new, used, and consignment firearms in Lake County, you'll avoid the Cook County Firearm and Ammo Tax with a short drive north. Plus, Shranks is offering 25% off their huge knife inventory through September. For gunsmithing, we know you can count on family-owned Shranks. Celebrating 52 years this month, it's worth the trip. Stop in now and save 10% on store-owned Springfield firearms and 25% off knives through September. And don't forget to stock up on cigars at Shranks. Visit smoke, the letter N, gun, dot org, or call 847-662-4034. Shrank Smoking Gun in Waukegan, your family-owned gun store since 1964. That's 847-662-4034. Or online at smoke, the letter N, gun, dot org. You know, he's like fine wine. Gets better with age. Apparently. Yeah, he does. You could stock up on cigars and put it with your rice and beans. There you go. And ammo. That's the best trading you're going to get. And ammo. Best trading you're going to get. Uh, this story is, uh, <laughs> I, I even had trouble reading it without bursting out laughing. So yeah. Mexico, Mexico has a um, plan in case Trump gets elected. And the plan, well, they haven't adopted it. but it's, They're talking about passing a bill. Yeah, they're talking about passing it. So here's the deal. Uh, in 1848, would they sign an agreement with the United States to cede certain lands to the United States? Because they lost the war, okay? A two-year war. Yeah, it was a two-year war that they lost. We kicked their butts for 2,000 years. Does this sound a little bit like Israel taking land when the, <laughs> the 10 to 1 odds or whatever it was surrounded them and they kicked all their butts? Anyway, uh, 1848 Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo was signed, bringing this two-year war to an end. Now, under that treaty, Mexico gave the United States a swath of territory which is now New Mexico, California, Arizona, Utah, Nevada, and parts of Wyoming and Colorado. They say if Trump gets elected, they want it back. And, well, there's there's several conditions, which is why I think this is probably, this bill is unworkable, at least from my understanding. I mean, obviously, their law is completely different than our law, but it sounds unworkable. If Trump gets elected, first of all. Second, if he also demands that uh, we build a wall and they pay for it, uh, and there was a third condition. I don't remember what it was. What did I, from day one, what have I taught you? Never let the truth get in the way of a good story. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it is true. There are some conditions on this, which oh, doesn't and make if, it feasible. If he, if he wants to uh, change NAFTA. Yeah. That was the third one, there, the third and, condition. And can you, see, can you see the labor unions in this country going, oh, no, man, we don't want to lose that. Let them keep all the business down in Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just want to see them cross the border in Texas. Yeah, Santana, exactly. Santana is no longer there, okay? Yeah. I want to see him cross the border in Texas go, amigo, you all belong to Mexico. Yeah, uh, this That's is it. this is one of those situations where I go, I double dog dare you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure the, I'm sure the Texans in particular are saying the same thing. Let me have it. ISIS yeah. guys to the north, you guys from the south, we'll take it on. Come on. It's okay. Yeah. Let's we'll go. Um I, I just don't even know I guess he's serious. The senator that proposes in Mexico, yeah. I guess he's serious. But yeah, it's hard to tell. 
But uh, you know, this is the part that I love. He says, we're neighbors, we're friends, we're partners. Yeah. No, we're not partners. <laughs> we share a border, that's it. This, this is like when I was in Mexico City in a hotel room in the middle of the night, and I, I started to feel ill, and then I couldn't figure out why I got up, and the room was moving. I go, what the heck is this? So I open the blinds, and I see explosions all over Mexico City. <laughs> and the first thing I think of is, who in the hell would invade Mexico City? <laughs> Why would you want to do that? Well, it was a it was a 7-1 earthquake, and there was a power transfer. It was blowing up. But this whole thing, I, first of all, even if they try to do it, that's not going to work. That's not going to happen. Right. Just the cost of changing the street signs into <laughs> Spanish would bankrupt the country. Well, it's, you know... I think California and Arizona have already done that. <laughs> it's um, it's just, but I just read this and I thought this was really funny. This is this anti-Trump thing. And the uh, not funny part of this is that all these people who are doing this have a vested interest in they don't want America to be its own country. Right. We scare the snot out of these countries because mm -hmm. even as bad as we are today under this president, we're still the biggest, toughest you know, guy in town. Right. Um, we're still the 500-pound gorilla. We're still the 500-pound gorilla. And it, and Vladimir Putin knows that, which is why he has said repeatedly, we don't want to have war with you people. <laughs> we don't want don't this to happen. Don't go there. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's what it all boils down to. Um, all of that nonsense, because the EU, but even in the EU, look what's happened. Now, Rexy started it. Pe countries in the EU are going, you know what? This isn't that cool. Now, why do you say Brexit with a French accent? It was in Great Britain. But I know <laughs> that is true. That is that you are correct. But I went online to the pronunciation thing because I wasn't sure how you would pronounce it, and it said Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back with more on Target Radio and more Brexit after these few messages. And you're listening to AM five sixty, the, the answer. answer. Stuck in traffic? We've got the answer from the AM560 Traffic Center. Take a look at traffic on the blue line. You're single tracking between Cumberland and Jefferson Park until tomorrow morning. That's for construction at the Harlem Station. And on the red line, northbound trains not stopping between Wilson and Argyle until tomorrow morning with construction work there. That also has a street closure involved, Broadway, between Wilson and Leland. Everything should be done by tomorrow morning. In Wheaton, Cruz with an accident, Blanchard and Roosevelt, the inbound Kennedy jamming from the 190 extension to Harlem through the left lane overnight road work. It's going to take you 25 from the airport, just 10, though, from the junction, delay-free outbound. Looking good on the Edens, the Ike, the Stevenson, Ryan I-57 in the Ford. No troubles on Lakeshore Drive, your area tollways, or the roads in Indiana. Right now, it's 80 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. Going to have some rain overnight and 59 degrees, a high of 66 tomorrow. Next update in 15 minutes on AM560, The Answer. ...were protesting something here and I taking over phones. I thought that was I superb. I could have hit this. I could have switched the mic for you if you told me. I was me, slightly out of breath, though, because I ran back. If you told and me. I was in pain. I know, but if you had told me beforehand, I mean, if you just said, don't switch forget to switch the mics. I well, I guess you probably would remember one and two as the studio thing. Yeah. Was the yeah. I mean, I would just switch it to whatever it's not. <laughs> well, that's true. You just. I don't have to remember you anything. Just I just yeah. make it the opposite. Are you going to take uh, Johnny? We're going to take John? Could be, you. could be unhappy if we don't. I don't understand the topic. I don't really think our next segment's all that riveting. I think we should take a... What is it? Well, the thing I find interesting about this next segment, it's not the prepper part, but the part about the Democrats are saying we're panicking. I think, I think it's just a fundraising tactic. Everything's a fundraising tactic. Mm -hmm. well, so what's the point of that? Well, I'm just... I'm just calling on. We'll have John come on, and uh, I'll tell him he's got three seconds. Don't do that. I bet he could do it. I bet he could. You don't know you're lying because you just don't have any segment. This is not his first rodeo either. Hmm. You don't think I should take him to the beginning? No, I do. I just don't think you should tell him he only has three seconds. Five seconds. I'll negotiate. No. <clears throat> 
30 seconds. George is negotiating. George is uh, weighing in on the argument. <laughs> How many seconds he should tell John some truth that he has? 30 seconds. 45. 45. 45. Oh. I didn't hear that. What? 45 seconds. He has seconds. two relatively decent points, so don't, he tell, does. don't give him a number of seconds here. Maybe he Both on his head or what? Dosage. Saturday morning at 10 on AM 560, The Answer. You're listening to On Target Radio on AM 560, The Answer, with David Lombardo and Gretchen Fritz. Here's David and Gretchen with more interesting conversation on gun control, concealed carry, freedom of speech, and other red meat issues that affect your life. We were going to talk about the Democrats panicking uh, over the, um, the Trump thing, but we decided that our good friend John from Crete would panic if we didn't get him in this segment. So, John, how are you this evening? Okay, I'm fine. How are you, Dave? I am just ducky, John. I truly am. Okay. So, anyways, I want to make two comments. Uh, you seem to speak disparaging of, of, of I, like, the idealists who can't do anything. But I have a placard that I, that I go into public with it's, uh, George Washington, the, the greatest president, that this country cannot survive without God in the Bible. That means high, high standards. And, uh, and, and my other comment is, you're talking about, uh, about Europe. Well, only three countries there are, are reproducing themselves. That, that means that the, the men and women have two, two, ch- two children per household. Um, and and, the, and the, the wrong thing there is that the rest of the countries are contracepting, which is a lie. And that is the cause of the, uh, letting the, uh, the Muslims come to Europe. John, you're, you are absolutely right. Now, I don't remember offhand what the U.S. Uh, birth rate is. Does anybody recall? It has to be, what, 3.5? It has two. to be 3.1? I think, it, okay. Uh, I, is that what two. it is, John? Is it, uh, is it two? To, is, you, at below which you, you are a dying nation? Yeah, 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 right, right. I, I, I heard that if the, if the, the, the man, and, the man and woman have two child, I guess that's that's equal to them. So I think two is uh, the minimum. Okay, but you are correct, that, and that that is not like you know, conspiracy theory. It is a fact. Yeah, and a lot of countries are on the negative. They're yeah. in the negative thing. Yeah. But if you look at certain populations, like Muslim population. They're on a very, very positive thing. Oh, yeah. Their Definitely. birth rate is much higher. Upward project, uh, projection. Exactly. So, yeah. John, John is exactly right about that. Uh, but I've never, and you know this, I have never said that this nation should not fundamentally be Christian, Judeo-Christian nation. I, I've always no. said that. Uh, I, and because one of the things we've talked about numerous times is there ain't enough cops to police a country. The, the only way laws work our people believe that there's a higher power that they have to answer to, and by breaking law, it's not it's bad enough to get caught by the cops, but there's a higher power that's going you're gonna have to answer to. And when you eliminate that, which is exactly what communists want to do, eliminate that and replace it with the state, then well, for the last, that's what happens. For the last about fifty or sixty years, that's what's been happening. Exactly. Is, you know, disregarding morality, which is based on the Bible, based on Judeo Christian values, and and that's what you get. You it, it went from the hippies and free love into everything that we've got now. And and yeah, I, I totally agree. If you go to almost any courthouse, because I haven't been to every one, and certainly to the United States Supreme Court, you will see the Ten Commandments. They are literally up in a frieze up, up mm-hmm. in the top of the Supreme Court. Right. So uh, clearly that that's always been the case. Uh, and I certainly believe strongly in that. The Constitution does not say you can't practice religion. It says the government can't force a religion on you. Allowing right. you to practice religion is not forcing religion on you. Right. Um, Matt said the American birth rate right now is 2.3, which is not enough because some people don't reproduce and some die early. We need at least three to four uh, you know, okay. there, Matt, children thank you. per couple to maintain yeah, I, there there are there is a sustainable number I forget, but it's in that in that category. I know I've heard it yeah, before. Uh, and if you fall below that birth rate, you're a dying country. Mm-hmm. Literally, you're a dying country. And this is a problem the Chinese had, incidentally, which was interesting. You know, they said the no women thing, right? They would literally abort females, leave them out on rocks well, or whatever. Well, that wasn't the law. The law was one child per couple. But right. They, but traditionally, they don't value girls. And exactly. So so yeah, they were aborting the girls, or they were 
But you yeah, see what were, you see what happened. After birth, yeah. What happened was now you have a generation, and I'm not joking. You have a generation of males that have no brides. Right. There's almost no women in their demographic. Mm-hmm. So tinkering with <laughs> tinkering with Mother Nature is never a really good idea. Right. It's just not a good idea. Uh, we got the phones lit up. We just have no no idea why that is. It's okay. It's pretty colors, and I like them, so that's fine. Um, well, they definitely touched a nerve tonight. We touched a nerve. I, I I know this is fundraising, but it is interesting <laughs> that the Democrats would openly say, we're panicking, we need help. They're saying they need a 1,000 Democrats now. My suggestion was to go to, you know, Oak Lawn Cemetery and turn them up, no problem. Um, that's what they generally do. That's what they generally do. It's um, that combined with Obama. I love this. Obama goes, you're on your own. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Prepare. Go out and get be one of you always are talking about getting beans and, and rice and beans. Rice and beans. Yeah, and I'm going no ammo. Get ammo. Survival food. Yep. Yeah. Survival food and ammo. But the president of the United States says, "I encourage all Americans to take proactive steps to prepare for any situation that may occur." <laughs> but the funny thing is, he he cites uh, climate change uh, and terrorism. Yeah. Even though he's the guy who never will say Islamic terrorism, uh, he thinks we should be prepared for it. I just find it very interesting. I find that very interesting that the man who has created the problem is now going, uh, it's kind of out of control. We can't really do much. He's like, well, we're doing everything we can to keep the American people safe, but ultimately it's your responsibility. Yeah, that's cool. But first we have to take your guns away. Yeah, well, I was going to say, it's it's okay that it's my responsibility because I I now have a complete arsenal so I have everything I need. And you have rice and beans. Well, I have rice. I still have to buy the beans. Better get the beans before somebody else gets to them. Yeah, I'm gonna go get some beans. Um, it's a new currency, 45 caliber. <laughs> All right, we're gonna come back uh, and wrap the whole thing up. Uh, there there are lights up on the board still, but um, we're running out of time. Uh, we need two hours. Can't even afford one. What does that tell you? <laughs> we'll be back. Uh, we'll wrap the whole thing up. we got some action items that we'll talk about. And so uh, just hang in there after a few words. We'll be back with more on Target Radio. And you're listening to AM 560, The Answer. It is amazing that shows for which I have almost no preparation whatsoever mm-hmm. light up the board. Maybe the moral of the story is not to prepare. Yeah, I think it, it tends to it tends to do better. What are you going to say? Um, how long you got? Did you say you were kind of short? Yeah, probably like 10, 30 minutes. Okay. You got anything pithy, Jim? No, I'm just uh, Sunday is fashion, isn't it? I just looked at the time and I realized how close we are to October one, and I realized how close we are to the end of the week. Mm. Scarily, it's like forty-seven days. It's or scarily like that. close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got my last paycheck. Kind of sad. Well, I'm saving your paycheck and direct deposit, but I got my last direct deposit. Um, so in a few days, I'm unemployed. You got room in your garage? <laughs> Me and a drum kit. Start- I'm starting to do the... Uh, me and a drum kit and a Harley. Excuse me. Me and a drum Harley. kit and a Harley in the bathroom. I hey, just need this TV clip. We might be able to make it. We might be able to arrange it. We can teach me to, to ride a bike, and, uh, and, then I'll, and I'll take the Harley back to work. And that'll be it. That's 24 grand right there. I could use that. That'll be helpful. See, that's the thing. I tell the wife, I'm like, you know, I'd like to really learn to bike. She's like, well, it's probably best you never go back to work. So there you go. Um, because it kind of sucks. Minor detail. <laughs> minor detail. <laughs> you, you actually can get, you can get a Harley pretty cheap. Small one. The first Harley I bought was a 1200, which is a great little bike. It's fast. It's really agile. Very simple to ride. Uh, you just it's, 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 you can't go more than a couple hours though, otherwise you need an ass transplant. <laughs> but, uh, but you can get for like nine nine grand. They got them like that's nine. actually not bad. No, it's, that's affordable. Yeah. For a starter. We're gonna go right to you. on Target Radio on AM 560. The answer with David Lombardo and Gretchen Fritz. Here's David and Gretchen with more interesting conversation on gun control, concealed carry, 
freedom of speech and other red meat issues that affect your life. All right, listen up, because G has what you're going to be doing for the next week. Stand by. Here's Gretchen with your action items for the week. You can request an absentee or vote by mail ballot from your county clerk right now. County clerks will begin mailing out absentee ballots September 29th. November 3rd is the last day to request an absentee ballot. October 11th is the last day to register to vote in person or by mail. Election day is Tuesday, November 8th. Save for USA is having a special class on September 30th for women who would like to learn to shoot rifles. You don't even need a FOID card or a rifle. AR-15 carbines will be provided if you don't have one. You may even have an opportunity to be in a music video. The following Safer USA classes are at our facility in Waterman. Friday, September 30th, Women's Introduction to the AR-15, taught by Ed Janko. Saturday and Sunday, October 1st and 2nd, NRA Pistol Instructor, taught by David. Saturday and Sunday, October 8th and 9th, and October 22nd and 23rd, Illinois Concealed Carry 1. This 16-hour class will be taught by David and Gretchen and meets the training requirements for Illinois Concealed Carry as well as Florida, Arizona, and Utah. Sunday, October 16th, Long Range Rifle, taught by Ed Janko. To sign up for classes, go to saferusa.com and click on Register. Short, sweet, and pithy. The interesting thing is like me. the pistol instructor thing. I went today to order the material, and <laughs> they don't even list it anymore. What? That's going to be problematic. I have to call them tomorrow and find out exactly what is going on. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's happening there. So uh, we have to look into that. Um, interesting show. <laughs> I, I just, uh, we never know, do we? No. I just, uh, you know, I was teaching all weekend. I didn't have a lot of time. I had to help out at the club some. And uh, I just, uh, you know, I get the news. I get tons of news every day. And I just kind of throw stuff in the corner. And I pulled a few things out, put it together, and, did it in a short period of time, wrote the rant in about 30 minutes, and the board lights up. And when I spend days preparing, nothing. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did you have a gaseous dinner? What was that about? I'm not even sure uh, what that was about. Um, say something, Jim. Just say hi. <laughs> oh, wait, there we go. George didn't turn my mic on. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> People want to hear, you know, they want to hear his voice. They want to know who Jim is. Well, they can see you as you're running out screaming. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the people who watch us on uh, YouTube, who they are know who Jim smart is. enough to yeah. watch us on YouTube. Yeah. They yeah. saw a lot of running tonight. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> like weird is something uncommon for our show? Is that what you're, what you're suggesting? Running is pretty normal, too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> if we've, you know, I've always said we need a reel. Right? You know, yeah. we, we need some kind of a reel on the show. Yeah. There's never been one show that's been normal. No. No. It's uh, Every time I look at a show and I think, we could put this in. No, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do that. It's not right. Nobody wants a whole show anyway, so it's fine. That's true. We have to pick things out like, hi, I'm David. <laughs> Cut. That's it. On to the next one. <laughs> that was the only good thing in that show. Exactly. I don't know. Anyway, it's been interesting. And we got we got no headway since last week. We're still going to go bankrupt in another week or two, but that is what it is. But we still... I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to On Target Radio, and be sure to listen next week because we'll be covering more of the red meat issues that affect your life. We'd also like to thank George Hoffman on the board, Jim Ekstrand, our video producer, and our sponsors, the Will County Grassroots Division of the ISRA, Shrank Smoke and Gun, the Illinois State Rifle Association, the Aurora Sportsman's Club, and Safer USA. And I just want to pass this thought on to you, James. If something happened to me, like I had to go out of town or I had cardiac arrest or something, you would be standing there, and she'd be standing here. You got to practice with Too fast. speaking. Too fast. This is some work. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you next week, and um, thanks for listening. And as always, I want to thank Mike for making it all happen.